Minister Troy Gore has served as an associate minister at Enon Tabernacle Baptist Church since 2006. He gave his life to Christ at the age of 13 as a member of Zion Baptist Church under the late Reverend Leon Sullivan. He's known throughout the city of Philadelphia as Coach Troy and mentors countless youth from underserved communities there. Minister Gore has three beautiful children who are all members of Enon and six grandchildren. He currently serves as a deputy chief in the Philadelphia Fire Department and his favorite scripture is Psalms 118.8. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. Please welcome Minister Troy Gore. When they walked up, I noticed something different, something wrong. They had a sense of confidence, almost like they knew what they were doing. Greeting every man, woman, and child that walked by. Good morning, sir. Good day, ma'am. Oh, you're such a beautiful child. And as they proceeded on, everyone turned around and looked at these two men astounded and amazed. And as they got closer to the fruit stand, the tall one looked like he almost caught my gaze and I saw no cane and I saw no walking stick. What matter of trickery is this? So I got in my position like I usually do. Every time these two gentlemen come through to purchase fruit, I got my pouch and I began to place apples and oranges and mangoes and bananas throughout. And the short one said, oh, no need for you to do that for us today, sir. We can get our own. So I stepped back and stood at all as they picked and prone and held the fruit up to check for freshness. What matter of trickery is this? So I asked them, how is it that you two men have regained your vision? The son of David, they replied, he has restored our eyes. Now I haven't heard many rumors about this guy, this so-called king of the Jews, this son of God, the, the walking on the water and the healing of the sick and this feeding 500 people with just a couple of fish. Who do we think he is? Look, I'm here all day selling fruit and hearing rumors. I try not to feed into it this Jerusalem folklore, fairy tale nonsense, but king of the Jews? <laughs> Caesar is our king. Son of, son of the creator? I tell you one thing, he is a criminal because that's blasphemy. I know one God, God of Abraham, Moses, David, Isaiah. I know one king, Caesar. Who do he think he is committing this blasphemy? You know they caught him. Yeah, brought him right down into Jerusalem to be tried. I had my fruit stand right outside the governor's quarters. Half the city was there. Most were doubters of this son of man, but others were supporters. And boy, did I make a killing. Everyone was buying fruit while they awaited the governor's orders. At that moment, the crowd roared as they brought him out onto the platform and the governor spoke to us. By the law of the land, you must choose one man to be crucified. Who's your choice? He said to us, the king of the Jews or Barabbas, the murderer. Caesar is our king. Crucify him, someone screamed. And we all joined in, crucify him. Crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. That next day, he was dragging that cross down the road towards me. And the people were screaming, come on, son of God, save yourself. And I saw people of great wealth spitting. And the soldiers was kicking and hitting. And every rock that was thrown at him was splitting his flesh. And he bled and he bled and he bled and he bled. And his face was swollen. And that thick thorn crown was stuck on his head, puncturing his temples. And he bled and he bled and he bled and he bled. And right before he had the, cut, the chance to pass me, I belted him real good with a real ripe fruit. Then I screamed, save yourself, son of God. Save yourself now, Messiah. Right at that time, his beaten, battered, swollen face turned around towards me. And I shouted, save yourself, son of God. And then I couldn't speak. See, one of his eyes was swole shut. But the other one, and that one, I saw peace. I felt forgiveness. I felt love. I felt, I felt. And then he turned his head and I shook it off. Save yourself, son of God. Save yourself now, Messiah. 
Then they made him lay down on that cross and they placed him upon it. They got that mallet and them bolts. And I literally saw sparks as they banged those bolts into the cross and heard the cracks and the snaps of his bones, of the bones in his hands and feet as they broke. And on every swing, I heard it break. And I didn't see no fight, no struggle. I mean, I witnessed many crucifixions and many of them fought and died by the sword, I tell you, rather than to hang on that cross and suffer. And when they stood the cross up, the weight of his body opened up his wounds even further, and he never swore, not to the least. And when his eyes caught mine one again, one last time, I felt that everlasting, adoring, comforting peace. And then I shook it off. Save yourself, son of God. Save yourself now, Messiah. You said you can destroy God's temple and rebuild it in three days. <laughs> well, come on down off that cross. And then he spoke. Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. Forgive? Forgive who? And then I belted him real good with some real white fruit. At that moment, the sky got dark like it was a storm coming. And the crowd began to thin out, except for about a hundred mourners, mostly women and daughters. And I began to pack up my fruit stand. But for the life of me, I couldn't understand why they were mourning and crying for this so-called Messiah, this so-called King of Israel, who deemed himself the son of God. And then he screamed, Eli, Eli, Lama Dadak, Sambagdadi. Look, he's calling for somebody. He's not the Messiah. He's calling for the prophet Elijah. He's not the son of God. Why do you mourn for this imposter? Then he let out a loud cry and his head bowed. Then the ground started to shake and move all around. And every fruit that I had on my stand was now rolling all around on the roll on the ground from a distance. I witnessed the holy curtain separating the priest's private prayer area from this main sanctuary split in two. And family and friends I knew were dead began walking through the city. What matter of trickery is this? Then it hit me. That, that enduring peace, that comfort, that everything was all right in the midst of this chaos, that I was loved. And then I stopped and looked and realized just who he was. And I grabbed that soldier's hand as he removed his helmet and his gloves. And we both got on our knees and started mourning terribly for our king, for he truly is the son of God. He truly is the Messiah. He truly is everything, everything. He claims to be, he is my Lord. He truly is my King. Recognize and save yourself.